All right, and welcome back to Tuesday night NFL Chalk Talk. We, Eric and I break down everything about the past NFL football weekend. Uh, lots to talk about. <laughs> lots and lots to talk about. So we're going to get bring him on real quick, and we're going to get started. And then we'll get going to Chalk Talk. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Tuesday night. Blistering cold out here. Hello, and, and welcome to Chalk Talk. I'm your host, welcome. Dash. This is your host, Eric. And apparently our wives are better at picking football than we are. So next week, the new host of the show will be my wife and Amber. So yeah, Amber. we'll be <laughs> right. turning it over to the No, I kid. I kid, I kid, I kid. Yeah. Welcome to the show, buddy. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Uh, there is a lot to discuss about this past weekend. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll just start with the the, the obvious. Uh, before I get to that, I, I do want to say thank you to a buddy of mine. Uh, thank you, Angel, if you're out there watching, uh, for sending me a Tom Landry. Uh, uh, everybody knows that I love pop. Everybody knows that I'm a Cowboys fan. But thank you, Angel, for sending me this awesome, awesome pop. It is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life, so thank you. That's classic. Very legit. Yeah, it was awesome. Thank you, buddy. I see he's watching, too, as well, so thanks. Um, let's just get right to the heart of it. Uh, is this not the most – and we've talked about this all season long. We've wanted exciting, exciting yeah. playoff games. And, and I think in my 48 years – this was the first time that that was delivered. Yeah, and literally every game from start to finish, you just felt like you were on, you know, the, the, the edge of your seat just waiting for something, you know, big to happen. Or yeah. even even the tackles seemed to be crisp, and even the mistakes seemed to be extra costly. It was just – it was an exciting weekend of football. Yeah. All four games were really, really good. Yeah, I, I just uh... – I never would I, I mean, the first three games came down to walk off, walk off uh, field goals, literally, no kidding, walk off. And then we have an overtime extravaganza, yeah. uh, which we're going to be talking about here in just a minute. Um, I have to say, man, that I love playoff football, but I really, 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 really love playoff football this weekend. And. <laughs> I know if you're a Bills fan, you're upset. Um, if you're a, you know, a Niners fan, you're so happy for a block punt. Uh, everything, again, everything came at the most. Well, the, the good things came at the most opportune time, and the bad things came at the most inopportune time. Yeah. Uh, let's let's just break down uh, the first game. Uh, Cincinnati, uh, the Titans. Uh, Cincinnati, I have one question before I turn it over to you. Cincinnati, I have one question. Did you pick up an offensive line before this weekend to play the Chiefs? Tell me about it, right? I think everybody's seen the stat nine sacks on Joe Burrow. I mean, that, you know, that guy's like elastic, man. How he's still standing. And he just wasn't taking – he just wasn't getting pushed. He was getting popped. Yeah. I mean, he was getting hit hard. And, <clears throat> excuse me, he was getting hit all day long from beginning to end. And yet – you still see him late in the fourth quarter staying in the pocket. You know, that they didn't really seem to make a lot of adjustments. They didn't put an extra tight end in the block. They still went with a lot of empty sets with no running back in the backfield. His timing still was, you know, uh, was, was a little slow. I mean, you're like, my goodness, you got, you got to think. Tennessee's coming for you. You got to, you know, step back more in the pocket. Make yeah. your timing passes shorter. Put a tight end in there to chip block. It just – they didn't seem like they were doing anything <laughs> to help Joe Burrow out. Excuse me. No. Yet, you know, they they did it. And I think one thing we're going to – I think one thing that's probably uh, – that we're seeing uh, officially is a changing of the guard from the defense to the offense. And, you know, what we see from the playoffs this weekend is that, yeah, this, the Giants-Packers game was, was a low-scoring game. But defense really didn't matter this weekend. 
you know, you had the you had the the nine sacks by the Bengals, they still won. Yeah. You had the four turnovers by the Rams, they still won. Yeah. Um, you know, Josh Allen and uh, the well, the Bills and the Chiefs they combined for almost a thousand yards in that game, and obviously yeah. somebody had to win. You know, just uh, defense. Yeah, the 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 Niners and and, and the and the Packers defense they they definitely came to play, but we're not going to be talking about the defense. We're going to be talking about the special teams. It was special teams that was special in that victory right there. So, yeah. you know, defense is it's taking a back seat now. Well, since you, yeah, I mean, I I, I swear, my, my wife just was even, Lorena was like, where is the protection? Where Why does he keep getting hit? And you're right. They did. I mean, they didn't make adjustments. They didn't roll him out. They didn't bring in an extra tight end to protect him. They didn't bring in an extra running back. I mean, P. Ryan's a big guy. Bring in P. Ryan. Yeah. And use him as a blocker. I mean, do something so he's not. I mean, yeah, they still won, but man, he was taking, like you said, he was taking some shots, and there were some shots to the mouth, there were some <laughs> shots to the chest, there were shots everywhere. Um, but yeah. you're right, I, I have never seen so much poise in a guy to bounce back up and still, man, I, I know if that was me, I would probably have said, all right, I'm done, just stop hitting me. <laughs> I don't know if I could have, you know, hats off to you, Burrow, that was a hell of a, hell of a, yeah. a show for you. And it's not going to get any easier this uh, this coming weekend e either. So no, I think it's going to um, get worse because Kansas City's front four has been yeah. playing way better than the Tennessee Titans defense has played. So yeah. they're going to be coming for. Joe they got to make some kind of adjustment, you would think, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, that's we already knew, we've, and we, yeah, we talked about this all year long. How he's the most sacked quarterback in in the league. We got that, and how he can st is still winning and still continuing to stand. I'll never know unless he's got like uh, super bones now or something like that because that yeah. was amazing. Uh, I wasn't. I don't think the Titans were ready, and and we'll talk about this again when we get to Green Bay about this week off thing. Is it is it is it? It used to benefit, but now I don't know if it's a benefit at all. I think that that hurt the Titans. And I mean, I, it, it, in a way, you know, it helped them get uh, uh, Derrick Henry back, but even he didn't look 100% still. Right. I mean, he was running hard, but he didn't look Derrick Henry. Yeah. He didn't look 100%. You know, and uh, we brought this up last week, you know, Coach Vrabel had a tough decision to make because he, they knew they were going to get Derrick Henry back, yeah. but you know, is he 80%, is he 90, 100, 75%? And then what do they do? Do they do they rely on what got them here after Henry's injury? Or do they try to incorporate him a little more and, you know, ride with what worked at the beginning because we knew that that was their identity. Everything went through Derrick Henry. And, you know, you saw early on that, you know, the Bengals really, they really focused on stuff in the run and the, yeah. the Titans didn't seem too focused on it. I mean, no. he still had – Derrick Henry still rushed the ball 20 times, you know, which for, for a lot of NFL teams is, is a lot of care. That's a lot. You know, but for Derrick Henry, that's – you know, I, I, that's about three quarters if you ask me. Yeah. And um, he – right, he didn't look really crisp. And so I, I think there was probably a little confusion in, you know, which way do we go. And, you know, the, 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 the Titans – I, I think they tried to balance it a little more, put it in Tannehill's hands a little more, and the Bengals obviously wanted that. And, you know, they got it. Very first play of the game, it's a pick. Yeah. You know, Tannehill throws an interception, and he just looked awful. To, uh, he just didn't look good at all that day. Another, th Yeah, that's another thing I noticed this week and was some coaching mistakes. Yeah. At the most – we're talking about inopportune and opportune times. Yeah. Some really bad coaching mistakes. I mean, there was no point for Vrabel going for that two-point conversion early. Yeah. Uh, not that – I don't know. You know, it doesn't change the outcome so much. But, you know, it it, it would have changed that drive up there a little bit at the end. Right. I think, in my opinion, it would have changed that drive up a little bit at the end. Yeah. Uh, right. Let's get – let's just talk about the other AFC game. And we're going to – we're going to – we're just going to mention it. Is it time – 
for overtime that rules to change in the NFL playoff, regular season, everything. Is it time for an overhaul? Yeah, so there's been there's been a lot of talk this week. Um, you know, you're referring to the, the Buffalo Bills Kansas City game that went into overtime and NFL's overtime rules allow for the first team if the first team that gets the ball, if they drive down and score a touchdown, that's the ball game. And so, you know, the the, the going uh, comments right now are that, you know, we got cheated out of seeing Josh Allen in a fantastic back and forth game. And yeah, I, there, there's, there's probably some truth about that. Uh, <clears throat> the reality is that the NFL has never been known for being the subject matter expert on sudden death. They didn't even have overtime until 1974. Right. And the league had already been playing for 50 years, you know, before that. And since 1974, there's really only been one, one uh, change to the overtime rule. That actually occurred after 2010 when the Saints beat the, the Vikings in that playoff game, in that championship game to go to the Super Bowl. Saints took the first drive down, kicked the field goal 44 yards, I think, 43 yards, and, you know, went to the Super Bowl. And thank you, Sean Payton, went on to win it. Right. Um, you know, so the same thing we're talking about today is what they were talking about in 2010. Well, you know, now you got to let let two guys let let you know both teams have a chance. Um, I'm not I'm not I'm open to to changing the NFL uh, overtime rules, and I do like the college rules. I think that's a good place to start. Um, but if they do decide on a change, they got to take into the totality of everything. They just can't look look back and say this game is why we need to change overtime rules. They have a ter the NFL has a terrible habit of doing that, of reacting to it. And I personally don't think this is the game that uh, we need to decide uh, should be changed. And there's a couple reasons. Number one, the Chiefs only scored a touchdown on less than 33% of their drives. Right in 48% of their drives, they scored. Period, and they only averaged three points a drive. So uh, the Bills, on the other hand, they only yielded points on 33% of their drives. You know, and and the the drives that their when their defense was on, they were only giving up an average of one point. So they were giving touchdowns, maybe 20% of the time. Right. So on paper, the, it was very uh, the chances were not in favor of the Chiefs scoring a touchdown. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it was – I I mean, I, the only reason I bring it up, obviously, we had the same situation a few years ago with the Chiefs and the Patriots. Yeah. They've gone through it. Uh, they, I know they put it up for vote. All the other teams voted it down on the change. I get that. I totally understand that. Um, here's the thing, and we want, we want to be talking about this. And I posted a song. I posted this question. <laughs> along with a song the other day that says it ain't over till it's over yeah. <laughs> and, and we talked about this a few moments ago listen i was all for buffalo i wanted buffalo to win Me but too. they made a huge huge mistake with that 13 seconds left on the clock yeah they did they kicked the ball into the end zone and 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 left them 13 seconds to where if they kick it a high kick or a at least a squib, at least they're, drop they're dropping at least two seconds maybe. Two. That's the difference between winning and losing that game is two seconds. I guarantee it. That's exactly right. They, they took less time to get down the field than Dak did running that, drop, that, that last play for the Cowboys. And, yeah. uh, you know, you, yeah, you're right. We, I think they made a critical mistake there too. Um, I know that they were worried. You know, Terry Kill had – returned a punt for like 45 yards and uh, McKinnon, he, he had, he was averaging like 33 yards of, uh, in returns also. So I think they were worried, you know, about maybe the big one going, but, but still if the squib kick would have, would have taken care of that. Yeah. And yeah, they probably would have gotten a little better field position, you know, than the 25 yard line. But more importantly, you're right. Two seconds would have been taken off. Even if you get that thing down to 11, 10 seconds, they're not going to be able to do that. 13 seconds. I mean, I didn't think 13 seconds was going to happen. I was saying that for the rest, all, all week since. I'm like, 13 seconds. That's crazy. Granted, they had three timeouts, but it only took two plays to get there, which I think is another mistake on the Bills. I, I, yeah, I think yeah. the defense was a little too soft, but. I think they were trying to protect the. The same outcome that happened to the the uh, you know Tom Brady and them 
I think that's what they were trying to protect and not. You know, yeah. But, I mean, we all know Kelsey was going to drop middle at some point in that drive. I mean. The, well, that's the error know. that I think they made. Is I, I, they looked to me like they were trying to protect the perimeter, but they didn't have to worry about that because the Chiefs already had three timeouts. Yeah. I think everybody knew that throw down the middle and call a timeout immediately. That's all you need to do. And they did exactly what, you know, what they wanted to do. Yeah, I think, I mean, that was one of the best, I mean, like I said, one of the best games I've ever seen. Absolutely. And, 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 and credit to the Bills, credit to the Chiefs for, you know, it, it, it's, it's true, guys. It ain't over till it's over. Yep. You know, my, my son is always saying, oh, it's over. It's No. We watched 25 points, 25 points being scored within a matter of a minute and 50 seconds. That's right. 25 yeah. points. Inside the most the amazing thing I've ever seen in my entire life. <clears throat> yeah. So it's not over. And, and again, I mean, the Bills played a good game, but the Chiefs, the Chiefs played a good game. We they talked about it pregame. They said whoever has the ball last is going to win, and that's what it was. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think they could talk about it. I, I I personally hate ties, and I wish they would go to a way that they would not. And you're right, chalk, maybe the the college way is to go. I do, for the sake of people, wish that game would have kept going because I wanted it to keep going because it was so good. Yeah. Um, to see how, how long it would last before. Who, who, I mean, at least give them a chance, I guess, is what I'm getting at. At least give the other team an opportunity if a touchdown is scored. Now, if a field goal is kicked, then obviously they, they get the chance to go down and score a touchdown. I get that. <laughs> but, again, they're not there if the Bills do their job on defense for two minutes and 13 seconds, I believe, was the actual time. I mean, I, it, literally, it was two minutes – in 13 seconds. If they played better than that for an entire game. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think the, both those defenses were just tired. They I were know they were gassed. You could see it even on – I mean, you could just see it in that, that – the remaining few minutes of the fourth quarter, they were gassed. Yeah, they were. And I get – I mean, it was – but, hey, man, they were just finding ways, finding – you know, I, I always sit here and watch the game like, oh, do something good. And normally nothing happens. You're just yeah. they're, they're out three and out or something happens. In this game, I, and I was pulling kind of for both of them because I wanted to see a good game. Obviously going for the Bills because that's who I picked. But <laughs> yeah. sit there and go, hey, I want to see something good. And there's a there's a 20 yard break for for Josh Allen <clears throat> or or a nice little toss. And it, it was great. It was a good game. And heart breaks for the the Bills. I do yeah. think there needs to be some talk about. Overtime a little bit, but we all we've all known. Uh, I will say this about the game: I I see some new Chiefs fans uh, that I never knew were Chiefs fans. So congratulations to you for picking a team in yeah. the playoffs. Uh, but uh, <laughs> no, it yeah. was a good game. I'm, yeah, it was. It was a fun game to watch. Yeah, it was a fun game, and and the Bills don't have any. How many really things to hang their head on? They had a great season. Now, I know there. Um, it's another year where they have to go back and and start all over again. But I mean, this was a this was a Chiefs team that we didn't think would even be here at the earlier in this year. So yeah, they made exactly. a. We weren't. We right. We were. We were casting them off. Week seven, week eight, we were casting them off, and they've turned it around big time. Uh we just talked a little bit about the Niners and the Packers. And again, obviously the Packers were doing what we thought, or excuse me, the, the Niners were doing what we talked about to beat. Yeah. Uh, because we, even in the earlier, even in the earlier the, uh, uh, season where they played each other, it was a pretty close game then too. Mm -hmm. It's not like it, that the Packers blew them out in that first game. Uh, they, obviously the Niners adjusted a little bit. Yeah, Robbie Gold, but but we talked about it. As long the Niners just have to play. Yeah, the Niners just have to play, and that quarterback's <laughs> name that's not going to be mentioned in this household ever again uh, just has to do what he has to do to win. And, and and if he throws interception, okay, he just doesn't have to be blatantly bad. 
Nope. He did. He was he was a little bit bad. I mean, but the pa- I'll give it up to the Packers. They put some pressure on him. But in turn, the Niners were putting a lot of pressure on uh, Aaron Rodgers as well. Okay. And the, you know, Coach LaFleur and the Packers, they walked right into the, the, the Niners game plan without even, without even, I think, realizing it. And, you know, the Niners needed, the 49ers needed the Green Bay Packers to be one-dimensional. And they needed, because they, you could see they had the game plan lined up to take out Devontae Adams. And that still didn't really work, but it worked well enough to keep Rodgers off his game. But they needed, they needed the Packers to abandon the running game. And the Packers did that without the Niners stopping the run. Um, they just abandoned it. You know, that, that first drive was a brilliant drive. It was actually a, a Packer drive. Mm-hmm. Go down right down the field, score a touchdown, get the ball, you end up, you know, up, I think they were up 10 nothing for, uh, you know, at one point. And they just abandoned the run. Yeah. And, you know, walked right into the Niners uh, playbook. And then the next thing you know, that's like three straight three and outs. And, you know, you, uh, you block a field goal and that small ball starts coming into play, you know, and you got a, a quarterback like Jimmy G who he just knows how to win. He's not, uh, <clears throat> you know, he's not going to wow you with, with the numbers, but he's not going to lose the game for you either. And yeah. just knows how to win. And he makes, you know, right throws at the right time. And, I mean, he just had some beautiful balls that, that were thrown at the, at the you know, perfect time. And then all of a sudden, the block punt, and next thing you know, the game is tied. And it's a brand new ball game. And everybody's like, okay. That, so. that, if it wasn't cold with the snow during that game, as soon as that block punt happened, it got colder. Because yeah. not a fan in that stadium was cheering on the Green Bay side. No, not one not fan. They were just. A loss for words. Yeah, man, I – like I said, he just had to do – and what we talked about, he just had to do enough to not lose the game, and he did it. He, he was – I mean, man, he was getting pressured a lot. He, was. he hung in there um, and made the right plays. <clears throat> but we – I mean, man, we've known all year long that, that uh, the, the special teams of Green Bay have not been good. Fair we've seen a few games where Worst they could have the lost had it, you know – yeah, but you know, and the the 49ers special teams wasn't wasn't fantastic at the beginning. I mean, Robbie mm-hmm. Gold probably a Hall of Fame kicker, but you know the the rest of the special teams wasn't wasn't fantastic. And they, you know, as they got they went on their run, winning nine of eleven. You just gotta you know tip your hat to that franchise. They put all three phases together throughout the season, and if one isn't doing so well, the other two are lifted up. Two aren't doing so well, the other one is doing well enough to to carry the carry the water it's really a it's an impressive thing to watch i mean you know for you non 49er fans out there it's not very fun but <laughs> one thing i will say and again i i told you last week i'm not betting against history i'm not i'm not going i'm not going to bet against history and that's why i took the niners in that game because whenever the Dallas Cowboys and the <clears throat> and the the niners meet 71% of the time the winner of that game goes on to the super oh, yeah. bowl you're right. So, uh, we'll get to we'll get to that here in a little bit. And then the last game, uh, the Rams and, and the uh, the the Bucks. And I really thought Los Angeles was going to give that game away. And it wasn't wasn't really. It was the again. It was the most inopportune times for those fumbles to happen for the Rams, <laughs> and the most opportune times for. Uh, is what it is, is what it always is. But you're on yeah. the one yard line, you fumble, or you got a Cooper Cup, sure hands Cooper Cup, 187 receptions all year long, never fumbled a ball, and then right, bam. So, yeah, how, all, all, all you football fans out there, everybody thought the same thing I did when Cooper Cup fumbled that. Like, there's no way this this Tom Brady magic is coming back to you. Mm-hmm. You know, that's exactly what went through my mind. I was like. Oh man, here we go. Cooper Cup just fumbled. And sure enough, somehow the game ends up tied. And I was like, you have got to be kidding me. You know, and Matt Stafford had to have been thinking, this is just ridiculous. We have four turnovers. It wasn't, none of these are my fault today. And now all of a sudden I'm finding myself, uh, you know, 
squirming my way out, but you had to hand it to him. Beautiful balls to set up that game-winning field goal. He threw some amazing passes. Somebody, our Angel asked, was the NFL trying to sabotage the Rams and Bucks game like people believe to let Brady in the NFC Championship? If they were trying to sabotage it, it was Akers and Cup doing a great job for their against their team because I didn't see any I didn't see anything blatantly out of the ordinary. I mean, hell, they even gave Tom Brady a who's his very first in, in what is it, 30 years? He's been playing for 30 years, I feel like. They gave him his first person or uh unsportsmanlike penalty of his career. <laughs> so well, I now I don't even proving sabotage is so hard, so so hard. I think they would have done it. They wouldn't have allowed. It. They would have called something against a holding call there when Cooper Cup caught it and went into they for the Rams to kick the field goal. And I was waiting. Trust me, I was waiting for that. I was yeah. waiting for a holding call on that that play. The the well, question I have, and we're going to get to it here in just a second as well. No, I I don't no, I don't think they sabotage. There's no, I mean, there's no way they could sabotage a game like that. I mean, they could, I guess, but I think it would be totally blatant if they did. I mean, yeah, it would have to be like calling on un, the ungodly amount of calls that we would blatantly see that they're they weren't bad or something like that. I, I guess that would have to be me. We talking about to try to get Tom Brady into the Super Bowl or yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you know. Von Miller gave Tom Brady a good fat lip, and they never called that penalty um, on on Von Miller. So now, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, I know there's. I've seen it. I've seen conspiracies and sabotaging. <laughs> no, Tom Brady is is done and 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 out of this playoff. And and maybe we'll see him next year. Maybe we won't. But he's done. And I don't want, he's done. Maybe. But I do, I, I'm getting ready to bring up a question on, on, on the game of the Rams and the Bucks. And this, this goes back to Staff. I saw that Stafford did not even touch Sue. I, again, to the, it, to the, the day, Sue, I will never, ever, ever be upset if, Ndamuk and Sue never plays another game in his entire career. I will never be upset. Sue is a, a, a big wine bag. He was a wine bag in Nebraska. He was a wine bag in Detroit. He's a wine bag wherever he's been. <clears throat> that is just Dash's opinion. I saw Stafford. He didn't kick him. Sue got up and just wanted to throw a fit to try to get a penalty. And he's a little baby. And that's the <laughs> Dash line, and that's what I'm going to say. Now I'm going to bring up something that again I'm going to bring it up because it's been it's been talked about by Cowboys fans and I guarantee you know which one I'm going to be talking about. The touching of the ball by the referee to down the ball. There's a lot of controversy. We I don't know if they got up there in time or not because they were showing Matthew Stafford the whole time running towards the ball, so we didn't get to see. I don't know if the ref touched it or not. I do know that the ref from the back of the end zone came up and he was in that area. So he, I'm sure he did set the ball. It just has to be a referee to set the ball at that point. Yep. My question is this. And again, I'm a Cowboys fan and I'm, I'm living in the past a little bit here, folks. <laughs> Why was it that done the same way in the Cowboys game when the, the referee, instead of waiting for a referee to run 45 yards, 50 yards back, and, and he's probably in his early 50s and 60s, trying to referee a game. Why didn't the referee from the back of the end zone come and set it at that point, which would have saved him two seconds? Yeah, exactly. And that's, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a referee kind of in game, you know, decision that they made. And yeah, the ref should have recognized the moment, and, you know, the, it, cause the side judges can't do it, obviously. Um, right. Any one of them, the closest ones could have dropped it. And, uh, and set it down for the Cowboys. And, you know, the, the, the Rams, the refs in the Rams game did the right thing. The right thing, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but I just wonder if that was because of what did happen Yeah, in the know, Cowboys I, game. 
it could be because uh, they debrief all the time. And, uh, you know, the, the, the coach, the, uh, uh, the refs, uh, not association, but, yeah, the refs, they, they debrief all the time. And then that stuff is shared with the league, which then is, you know, the lessons learned that, you know, we know from the military, which is then attempted to be applied. They may have decided, you know, the refs in this game may have decided, hey, if this happens, if this gets close, then this is what we'll do. And then they recognized it and went after it. Um, and, you know, the, the Cowboys game, the, the refs didn't recognize that. But also in the Cowboys game, Cowboys center had that issue earlier in the game with the center. And he was, you know, the, the, the Cowboys were trying to go into a hurry up and the refs just were walking up and the center's like, take the ball and set it down. Yeah. And, you know, the ref just wouldn't do it. The official just, for whatever reason, wouldn't do it. And at center, I mean, Cowboys center was mad. Literally. So there clearly was setting issues that the Cowboys had throughout that game that probably got addressed in this game for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, our final, our final uh, four is set. Niners and Rams, Bengals and Chiefs. Who, who has more to lose, the Niners or the Rams? Oh, definitely the Rams. The Rams are, they're, you know, they're, the Rams are all in. It's a, you know, billion dollar franchise, uh, practically with all the superstar hires. They've got nothing in the uh, in the futures tank with, you know, no draft picks, and they are clearly in a win now mode. Um, also, you know, they they finished as the division winners. And they are kind of expected to, granted, they're the number four seed, but they're kind of expected to be the ones to, to jump in. You know, the 49ers, on the other hand, they, they don't really have, to me, they don't really have anything to lose. Um, you know, they were, they were not counted to be as, granted, they were counted to be a projected playoff team. We've been talking about them all year as a projected playoff team, but they started off three and five and were kind of written off for a little while. Um, yeah. but got it together and played some of the best football in the NFL over the last 11 weeks, uh, um, over these last 11 weeks. So I think the Rams clearly have a lot more to lose in this situation. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think the, and we talked, and again, we talked about this, that our, the Niners were our team that were, I mean, were going to be scary. They were the team that we thought that had the chance to go from a wild card to a Super Bowl uh, matchup. Um, you're right. I think the Niners don't have anything to lose uh, because it's kind of like those – they didn't have it to begin with, if that makes sense. That's we right. picked and, – and we picked the West to be the toughest division anyways in the mm -hmm. NFC. We knew if not all four, at least three of those teams were going to be rough and tough all year long. Yep. Turns out we were right. The, Nin the Niners, I think – Again, if they go in and play like they did that last week of the season, we're getting a trilogy out of this, out of this, and the and the Niners have won the the pre you know have owned the season record against the Rams. They're uh, Rams are 0 two. But that being said, that's I mean I, I don't think they have anything to lose in that aspect because yeah. again they're the, the they're the lower seed. I do think the Rams though. It's hard to beat a team. I mean, hell, it's hard to beat a team two times a year. I don't know if you can do it three times a year. Again, I'm not, and I really am going out here, and I'm not betting against history. But in turn, I still want Stafford to sh just to shove it down Detroit's throat this weekend and get to a Super Bowl. I really do. I really, really do. This 49ers-Rams game is going to be a, is really tough to go and pick right now. Yeah, the 49ers beat the Rams. What I, isn't it six straight games? I think I heard. Like I you want to talk about straight. you want to talk about history. The the 49ers own the Rams right now. But with that being said, you're right. It's really hard three straight times in the season, including the playoffs. That is really hard to do in the National Football League. And let's face it, I think the Rams played probably their best football game against the Buccaneers of the four turnovers aside, you know, that offense was humming. The defense was crushing Tom Brady for three and a half quarters. And there's Brady magic, whether you like it or not. And that yeah. just kind of kept the game interesting, but that Rams team looked really good. And if, if, if they can play balanced football and if that defense can, can continue to 
you know, to, to play the way they're capable of playing, the superstar way that they're capable of playing, I, this, the, the, the Rams could very easily win this. But you can't, you're right, this one's tough. You can't count the 49ers out because we've been counting them out most of the year. We didn't pick them. I, I did pick them against Dallas, but I didn't pick them against Green Bay. It's funny, a buddy, another buddy of mine pointed out that we're getting the the exact week 18 matchup the, of the of the final seat or the regular season yeah. week 18 matchup in the in the playoffs here. We got the Bengals and Chiefs, 49ers and Rams. Yeah. So you got to ask yourself, does does history repeat itself in week 18? Do the Bengals have what it takes to take down the Chiefs? Well, the Bengals didn't play Joe Burrow in that last game. They seeded uh, they seeded the the second seed, potentially the first seed, uh, that weekend to, right. to rush Joe Burrow because of his hand injury. So the the Bengals that that game is going to be interesting. I, I think a lot of people are thinking the Chiefs are going to blow them out, but the Bengals have played probably some of the best football these past several weeks um, because they know their weaknesses and they know they have to work harder to compensate for them. You know, the Chiefs are, they're just a, they're just a fun football team to watch and they are going to execute. But with the Bengals, I think they're going to be a little bit uh, underrated going into this game. And that's very dangerous for a team that literally has nothing to lose. The Chiefs, I mean, this, you know, four straight championship trying to go to their third straight Super Bowl. It's pretty unprecedented in its own, Hmm. but everybody knows they're probably going to be back in it this year. You know, that I think the, most of the world's looking at the Bengals is like, really? They're here? And yeah. they're probably not going to be here next year. So I, I think the Bengals are a very dangerous team. This very well could be the third matchup between the Bengals and the 49ers in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I would just like Angel said, we may get an 89 Super Bowl rematch. It's It's quite possible. Just know Joe Montana and Boomer Siason and right, uh, Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice. I like I, I was sitting there. I miss my Roger Craig and my Tom Rathman and my Jerry Rice. I, the, that's the Niners I like. Uh, and, that's the Niners and I hate. man, that was a great yeah. Even though that I was a Cowboys fan, I always I, I was a huge Tom Rathman fan. In, in high school, I had the goatee like Tom Rathman, trying to be as cool as I could be. I am going for the Bengals in this game. I hate I, – I know the Chiefs, and, and, again, like I said, I saw more – Chiefs. it's almost like the Yankees were playing football this weekend. Uh, you know, like all these new Yankees fans that just came out of the woodwork, so now that everybody's a Chiefs fan all of a sudden. Yeah. Now, right. I know I know some I know some diehard Chiefs fan, nothing against you guys, but – one week I'll see go Cowboys or go this team, and then the next week I'm seeing oh the Chiefs are my favorite. No, I'm just I'm done with you fans. Done with you. <laughs> done, 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 done. Um. That being said, I I, I have a it, it came to light this week. I have an issue with some of the Chiefs players, one in particular. I, I'm not going to say his name. I'm I. I I just have a problem with this past history, not only at Oklahoma State, but things he did pri- uh, previous. So, no, that doesn't mean I have to dislike a whole team, but it does kind of – and I know other players have their bad backgrounds. I know it. Yeah. Absolutely know it. But something about him just drives me crazy, and, and, I, and I can't – is that bad on me? I want your I want your opinion. Is that bad on me to have that feeling? No, I think everybody I think everybody has it. You know, you get, you just got somebody that rubs you the wrong way. Nah, I mean, I you know I I got some I couldn't stand Philip Rivers forever. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as he got as as he got older and stuff, I, I kind of lost that. But at the very beginning, I couldn't I couldn't stand him. You just you just every time I saw him on the field, just rubbed me the wrong way. You know, the face the the movements, but no. I try not to be, ju- and I'm not trying to be judgmental, and and and, and probably bad on my part, but uh, yeah. The the other question I have is is there a, is there a Vegas odds on how many times Mahomes' girlfriend or fiance will be mentioned this week? 
<laughs> I saw that. <laughs> of course, they're going to be Vegas odd. You know, the, the Caesars app is up and running now or something <laughs> like that, isn't it? So you can bet on anything nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> In the real, though, I mean, I think the Bengals have a shot like you were talking about. I, I really do. I do think they have a shot. Yep. Obviously, the Chiefs are the more seasoned veterans as far as in the playoffs and, and things of that nature. Home field advantage. I Man, I don't know. It's it's going to be a good game. I don't think I don't think Cincinnati will be blown out no. at, at all. I don't think they'll be blown out. I think it'll be a, a really good game. I think we're going to continue to see those games that were left off from this weekend. We'll see some good games. Yeah, I mean, you know, home field advantage is completely out the window in these playoffs. Three or four teams won on the road this weekend. And – you know, quite frankly, the Chiefs had no business winning winning their game, but you know they found a way to win. So, yeah, yeah just because the the Bengals are coming in underrated and it's the vaunted Chiefs and they're relaxed and they've been there before, and you know Mahomes, just a fantastic quarterback. Yeah, the Bengals are there for a for a reason, and they absolutely can win this game. And then you look in the NFC. Well, you said it yourself. You know, the the Forty Niners have pretty much owned the Rams uh, this year, and they you know they. They played dominant football and they've had to come back and win. So they both know how to, you know, both these teams know each other very well and they know how to play each other very well. And they're both of these games are absolutely a toss up. All right. Well, let me get your pick 49ers or the Rams. I think I'm going to take the Rams this time. I think, uh, I think they're in. Okay. Uh, Lorena is taking the Rams as well as, and I am taking. The Niners. I am going with the Niners. I'm not going against history. Although, I, like I said, I'm really pulling for Stafford to have, you know, I won't be upset. Let me put it this way. I won't be upset if either one of them wins. So, I am taking the Niners, even though I won't mention that guy's name for the 49ers. <laughs> I will not. All right, Bengals at Chiefs. Yeah, I think the Chiefs are going to win this. I'd like to see the Bengals do it, but. I think we're going to see the Chiefs Rams Super Bowl that we should have seen three years ago, four years ago. Lorena took the Bengals. Not a bad pick on her part. I, I am pulling for the Bengals. However, my pick is for the Chiefs. I know they are going to, well, I shouldn't say they know they're going to win, but that is, I just think they're the, 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 the veteran teams are winning a little bit better right now. All right. So, um, by so, the way, Amber is taking the Chiefs and the okay. Rams. Yeah, I do not want to – I do not want to upset her again. I am not going yeah. to upset her again. Fortunately for me, she took the same teams I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she – I will not upset like, – like I said, Lorraine and her are hosting the show next week anyways because we're yeah. better at this than apparently we are. Uh, <clears throat> all right, we got all the playoff stuff. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of questions going on. One, we're going to give you a moment to speak about here in just a moment. Uh, some things that we didn't see coming, obviously. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Sean Payton, uh, and I'll let you talk about it here in just a second, had just announced today that he is stepping down, not retiring from what I'm reading, just right. stepping down. Let you have the floor. Yeah, this one kind of this one kind of came out of nowhere. Um, Ian Rappaport first reported it a couple of, couple of days ago. And, you know, with, with him, the, the track record wasn't that great. When the Saints were losing 7-9, and nine, going 7-9 and nine every year, there seemed to be the annual comment by him that the Saints uh, were moving on from Sean Payton. But this year kind of felt a little different. And then Jay Glazer reported it. And Jay Glazer from Fox uh, is – him and Sean Payton are very good friends. Yep. And that's when I, that's when I took notice. And sure enough – about less than 24 hours later, uh, my, my, my cell phone, my text messages are blowing up uh, talking about Sean Payton stepping down. And for, you know, for the casual football fans and, and for those who are not Saints fans, um, this might not be kind of that big of a deal. You know, it's just news. It's just another coaching uh, rung on the carousel. Uh, however, down here, you know, in, in, in Louisiana and in, in the Houdet, for the Houdat Nation, there's really kind of two different New Orleans Saints teams. Uh, granted, there's the one team we've always loved, but there's really two different ones. There's the team that started in 
on All Saints Day, November 1st, 1967, and literally abysmal, just terrible. One playoff win in its first 40 years, 35 years in existence. We didn't get, a, we didn't get our first playoff win until the year 2000 when we beat the Rams uh, in a wild card game. And then, so there's the pre-Katrina Saints, and then there's the post-Katrina Saints. 2005, Hurricane Katrina came. We all know what happened in the Superdome. The images are terrible. But the Saints hired Sean Payton as their head coach. And Sean Payton said, we need to, you know, we really need to go all in and take a chance on Drew Brees. And, you know, the, 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 from 2006 to now, you have, a, you know, the Saints are, it's a, it's a character built, motivated to win team that really inspired an entire area. You know, the, the whole area of the South uh, has kind of become Saints fans uh, down here. And, you know, winning helps. John Madden has said it all the time. Winning is the best deodorant. Um, you know, but the, the culture down here, the, the Saints, they've always been. But once the winning started, that, that kind of lifted this area up, you know, more prideful than it ever has. And so the news of this happening, it, it kind of ended – you know, it, it took us out of that that high that we've had for 15 years, you know, where we we now, we, we say this all the time, you learn how to win, you have to learn how to win. Well, the Saints did learn how to win. And Sean Payton, yeah, Drew Brees, one of the best quarterbacks ever, but, but Sean Payton is really the driving force behind that. And that's why I wasn't nervous at the beginning of this season, even though Drew Brees was gone, Sean Payton is a, he's a, he's a force, he's a balance. You know, he's like the mom and the dad. Um, and so I knew they were going to be okay. And, you know, his best coaching job ended up just wrecking him, I think. And I, I think he decided to, that this was enough, uh, at least for now. He, he, he did not rule out coaching again. As a matter of fact, he said he will be in the football arena and he could see himself coaching again. Um, it's just not going to be with the Northern Saints. And, it's it stings. It's sad. I'm very happy for you know for him. He's obviously done a lot for us. Uh, he lifted up. He really lifted up the nation after Katrina, if you think about it. And uh, we're sad down here, but um, we'll, we'll get back on our feet. Hopefully, the culture is is there, and you know the Saints continue to be kind of that that winning franchise, and we don't revert back uh, to the pre-Katrina Saints. Well put, well put, yeah. Is it, is it like Tom Landry leaving, sort of, kind of? You know, that's a, that's a fantastic question because, you know, Tom Landry, my all-time favorite head football coach, and I wanted to, you know, some of my coaching philosophy when I was coaching, I, you know, I read his books and I would think about what he wanted and, you know, and think about things in his terms, and he's just, he was a revolutionary defensive coach, changed the game of football completely. And um, Sean Payton, I don't think is quite there, but Sean Payton is is big culturally, you know, for 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 more revival. Tom Landry is more revolutionary, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, I know how it felt when for me, you know, I mean, I mean, we were. We were still, pretty, you know, pretty young, but we were old enough to know what it was like to watch Tom Landry walk off that field for the last oh, time. So, yeah. it's the second time my heart's been broken by coaches. Yeah, I, I man, um, I understand that. Well, that was and, a beautiful foot, man, and and I know the Saints fans will find ways to, to you know, bring in the the, the next coach that comes in and and give yeah. them the same respect that they gave Sean. And get you're right. I mean. You know, there. I mean, part of me kind of wants him to uh, cross the river there and head on over to Dallas a little bit. That's part of me. Part of me doesn't well, want him to reports, leave uh, right? leave the Saints at all. Uh, you know, I love the Saint. I love the the rivalry that Dallas and the Saints have, anyway. Yeah. So, and so it's it's sad to see him leave because he was a huge part of that team. So, uh, yeah. good luck to the to them finding the coach, and I'm sure they will stand on their feet. Well, uh, you know, I, maybe I uh, see him coaching the Cowboys in in two years. I really yeah. do. 
Well, we, we've seen, like we talked about, this weekend was crazy. We talked about a lot of it. We've seen two quarterbacks. One, maybe, maybe calling it a quits and, and walking away. And another one that might find a new team. Or does he sign for another four years? What are, you, what are your thoughts? We'll go with Tom Brady first. Is he done or is he back for 45, 46? You know, I actually think he's going to hang it up now. The, the comments that I was hearing, you know, this last, just this last week, uh, were I don't I don't remember you know I don't remember Tom Brady saying before that he was going to take some time to consider and family comes first you know what what I had been hearing before this was he was all in and uh, you know uh, Rob Gronkowski he's like I don't know if I can do this another year I I don't I think I think Tom Brady Brady's going to hang it up this year it's he doesn't. He has nothing else to accomplish. He's not going to get the ten rings uh, that he wants to. You know, he's <clears throat> he's already. It's already in everybody's mouth that he's the best quarterback ever. He holds just about every single record ever by now. There's really nothing else for him to play for other than just the love of the game. Yeah, I I I, I think it's the end of an era. I think the Brady. I think the Brady era is done. Yeah. Uh, again, if he comes back, okay, but. Again, I mean, maybe he's chasing 10, but I think at the end of the day, I mean, he's already submitted himself. If not, if not the GOAT forever and for 20,000 years after we're, we're, we're long and gone, at least for the, you know, for the most foreseeable future, unless, I mean, yeah, like what was the last 40 year? I mean, Warren Moon maybe went pretty deep into his 40s, if I'm not mistaken. Jim Kelly maybe a little bit into his forties. I yeah. don't. I say this, Tom, and if and, and if you're listening, I hope you are. You know, give us give a shout out, Tom, if you're listening. Don't go out like Roethlisberger. Don't go out like that. Go out. I mean, you've lost, but go out a, 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 in a in a really good loss. Yeah. And I say that was a really good loss because you again, we talked about it. Brady Magic, Brady Magic is always going to find a way to tie up a game or win it. But and not that I don't want you to come back because I, if you do, I I want people to beat the best. But that being said, I, I man, I would just I would call it quits. You have nothing to prove, and you've got everything going for you. And and man, I don't know. It'll. He said he was going to take some time, but I, I don't know. Just like you said, something I felt in the way he talked about it was different than the year before last. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So I saw that I mean, same thing when Drew Brees retired. You know, you just, you just, you could see it and then you could, you could just kind of feel it with, with the body language, with the words, the message is coming out now. I mean, it, you know, he's, is he still capable of playing? That's a completely different question. Yes. I think absolutely. Yeah, I think he's still capable. But does he want to? 18 games now. It's it's more than 17. And in a Buccaneers offense, he's slinging the ball 40, 45 times a game. And that's got to wear on anybody, much less a 40, what is he, 44-year-old quarterback? Yeah. 45, that's, man. Yeah, I think he's done. I think he'll make an announcement. That brings us to the other question. Where do we see Aaron Rodgers? Is he go back to Green Bay? Is he going somewhere where he's appreciated? I don't, not that he's not appreciating Green Bay, but. Yeah. You know, I, this is one of those ones that I think I'm going to be surprised either way because I had been saying that you know, he played the, he played himself so well into the team that I could have seen them trading away Jordan Love. Yeah. Um, and, you know, signing him to another three-year contract until college, uh, you know, until college quarterbacks become a little bit more marketable. But the way they lost, you know, and losing always changes the mindset, yeah. you know, and, he, at least to his credit, he came flat out and said, yeah, I don't want to be part of a rebuild. Telling, obviously, 
not just the Packers organization, but his his agent and all the other teams out there. Um, it, no, I'm going to a contending team or I'm staying in Green Bay or you know what? I may just ride off into the sunset. Hmm. I don't think he's going to do that, though, because I, I think he still has a legacy to that he wants to, you know, cement. I think he still wants that second Super Bowl ring. Yeah. Find a way to beat the Niners. That's for sure. Oh, that's what's got me, right? Uh, maybe you go play for the Niners. Yeah. <laughs> Get rid of the quarterback who won't be mentioned and go play for the 49ers. <laughs> yeah. I, I, there's a couple teams I could see. The Saints being one. Denver being another one that I could see him playing for. I don't know where. I don't know if he moved. I, I, I mean. If you go, if he goes into the AFC East, that's or AFC West, that's that's pretty brutal. No matter where you're at, so yeah. I don't know. And the AFC, I see him staying with the NFC though. I just can't see him going to the AFC and and, and getting beat up there. As I mean, we saw that this year. The AFC beat the crap out of everybody. Yeah, they just beat the snot out of each other. Yeah, each other. Um, I. I can't, I, unfortunately, you know, and I was saying this to a lot of my friends at work, same thing with Russell Wilson. I don't see these, I don't see these, uh, these star quarterbacks going down in New Orleans right now. Um, I, I, I think we're going to see the team go in a different direction and, yeah. and start a rebuild, unfortunately. But so I, I think Russell Wilson is out. I think Aaron Rodgers is probably like, oh, no, Sean Payton. No, nope, can't do it. So, but you're right. Denver is, uh, Still, you know, pretty good possibility for him, even though you're right. It, it, NFC is probably the best place, but they're really, other than teams that are rebuilding, you know, Kyler Murray's not an option. Him going to, him going to Arizona is not an option. Obviously, Dallas isn't an option. Um, Washington. If you ask Cowboy fans, it's an option. But, uh, <laughs> no, uh, there, there's so many Dak haters right now. It's not even funny, and it's. But we're not. Well, that's a show. Another show in itself. Uh, yeah, I see him uh, staying in Green Bay, though. I really Brady do. retires and and Rogers heads. I don't think. I don't think Rogers will ever go to Florida or Bucking. I don't know. I, I just can't see that. He could. I, I should never say never. Yeah, I do I, see. I do think that he'll stay in the NFC. Is is my is my personal opinion. Well, yeah, you know, Tampa Bay does become an intriguing possibility. You're absolutely yeah. right. Uh, Miami, uh, I mean, they, the franchise seems to be sold on too. It seems to be Coach Flores that was not sold on him. So, but there was a little bit of throwing under the bus this week in Miami. So once I get more, there was some some two uh, throwing under the bus stuff. Yeah, coming from other players. So maybe uh, I don't know. Yep. I, I, I'm going to stand by my statement from earlier this season that I do believe we're going to see Baker Mayfield in the Seattle Seahawks. I believe we'll see Baker Mayfield, Bay, Mayfield in the Seattle Seahawks uniform, and we might see, uh, a, you know, just a one-for-one swap in Cleveland and, and Seattle. I could see – I could really, really see that happening too. All right. What is what is it you're looking for? I mean, we saw I, I don't know what else we can look for that we didn't see in this past weekend. What are you looking for in our division or in our uh, NFC and AFC championship games? Well, yeah, the the obvious thing in the in the AFC games, I'm looking to see what adjustment Zach Taylor and the offensive line makes to protect Joe Burrow. And then if they do protect him, what does that mean? Does Joe Burrow throw for a thousand yards and ten touchdowns <laughs> in this game? Because you know you get sacked. And still throw for 400 yards and something like that and multiple touchdowns, you got to be, you know, that's almost superhuman. So, you know, what does the pass protection look like? Um, because if that, if if the pass protection holds up, I think the Bengals have a really solid chance at stealing this game. And then in the NFC, which Rams team is going to show up? The 49ers, to their credit, they have been consistent. Yes. They have, you know, they've consistent. They know who they are. They know they're a good football team, and they just go out and they execute. The Rams are they're just a roller coaster. You know, one minute they're slinging the ball and they're doing all kinds of good things, and the next minute, you know, they're letting, you know, a team back in it after being down by 
you know, almost 20 points. Mm -hmm. So which team is going to – the Rams did this to the 49ers in week 18. You know, they were up 17-0. They ended up losing the game. So, you know, which, which Rams team shows up? Those are, the, those are the things that I'm looking at this weekend. I'm right there with you on the, on the Bengals Chiefs as well. I think for the love of everything that is holy, Cincinnati, protect this kid. Protect this kid. I, it's, it, and you're right, man. If they get an, a, somebody to protect him, does he throw for 600 yards, 700 yards, 1,000 yards? It's possible. This kid is amazing. Burrow's an amazing quarterback. And, yeah. and it's – and like you said, he didn't play the first time around. What are we going to see? And could it be a different – has the Chiefs met their met their kryptonite in this Yeah. This season? We'll find out. Um, 49ers, Rams, again, like I said, I'm not going to be upset either way if, if the Niners win and or the Rams win. Um, I think it's – both of them are great representatives for the NFC, um, you, and you nailed it. The, the, the Niners have, have the Niners have been themselves and and all year long, even though they lost. They, but they finally put together what they needed. And and again, the toughest team going into the playoffs, the toughest team playing in the playoffs. Hard to go against. Like I said, hard to hard to go against the uh, the history of the 49ers. Um, so. I'm looking just I just looking to see can the 49ers continue to play uh keep away ball like they did in the last meeting with these guys and, yeah. and on the and, and that and keep it away from them and win the game and it's it's quite possible. Yeah. It is quite possible because that's what the that's that adjustment they made in that second half and that is why they got back into it and that's why they won the game is yeah. they played keep away from the Rams. That's right. If the Rams get out to an early early start again, may not may not be as lucky this time, but it's 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 possible. That's right. Excellent points all around. Well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been our last week. Apparently, like I said, our wives are taking over because they're way much better at picking football <laughs> than we are. No, kid. Don't tell Amber that though. Yeah. All right. Next week we'll be talking. Uh, Who's going to the Super Bowl? We Super will Bowl. know next Tuesday who's going. We'll have a show on Tuesday. But thank you for coming out tonight. Thank you. Uh, again, thank you to my buddy Angel for giving this awesome. Yeah. Tom Tom uh, Tom Landry pop. It's you know where it's going to be loved forever in my uh, in my collection. Uh, thank you, Eric, for coming out tonight. We'll see you next Tuesday. God bless. All right, guys. Have a wonderful night. Enjoy your night. Thanks for coming out. See ya.